Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hey, you know. And tonight, we will be reviewing that sort of pop... Um, pop I guess, I, guess no, I would call it um, a pop cultural pop, classic. That sort of was, because it was, it was a pop... It's a pop hero born into the movie, so yeah, it's probably pop culture. Yeah, mm. so, uh, so it's called... Conan the Barbarian, that was released in 1982. And don't confuse it for the other there, one. There's a remake, I think, 2011 or someone with some mm. other guy in it. We're yeah. talking about the Arnie Schwarzenegger one. Yeah. Actually, Technically before we go, one of his first major Well, films. actually, this made him. Because hmm. before that, he was... Um, I wouldn't say he was nothing. He wasn't anything. I think he was doing some acting, but... Um, uh, this sort of, uh, I suppose, set his career in concrete more because he became this, oh, Conan the Barbarian action guy, hero type guy. And I think that sort of set his career more in motion along the, um, mm-hmm. the action yeah. sort of guy. Before yeah. this, mm. he was um, a bodybuilder, I think. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was doing bodybuilding and stuff. Maybe mm. we'll talk about it a bit later on, mm. but yeah, interesting that. Yeah, mm. interesting. Um, he, thanks to um a few major actors in this movie, it kind of set his um acting career in motion. Well, that's what I just said. Yeah, this is a, this is even concrete. So uh, see, James L. Jones, yeah. he helped him assist him with he, um acting. He gained some ideas on how to do some of the scenes and deliver some of his lines and whatever. Mm. The um, mm. the producer director John Miller Mill, uh, Millius. Uh, uh, gave him some uh, voice coaching lessons as well, I think. Mm. To try, because he had a very... Um, is it Austrian? Mm. Old? No, I think it's Austrian. It, whatever. I think it's Austrian. He had a very heavy accent, so some of his English pronunciations weren't all that good. Yeah. So he had to sort of iron those out as part of the production. Mm-hmm. Mm. True. Do you want me to go on to my, do my usual usual? Yes, my usual usual. My usual. Produced by Buzz... Mm. Uh, Feet, Feet Shands and Raffaella Dolorent, Dolorentis. Now, that's Dino's daughter. <laughs> Dino, I think, was interested in it and he put his money up, I think, but she did the producing for him. Nice. Okay. Uh, directed by John uh, Milius, written by John Milius and Oliver Stone. Uh, I think Oliver Stone might on the main writing and John did a rewrite. I think I'm not really sure, but I could be I could be wrong on that. Don't get me wrong. I don't, don't take me. I'll get in trouble. Don't shoot me. I'm just um, now. This is based on Conan the Barbarian uh, comics, adventure, pulp fiction, whatever, uh, by Robert Howard. Hmm. I did say to hmm. Mike just today that this came from a comic book. I just said that um, area. I just said that. I know, but I was just I telling just you. Said that. Mike yesterday said he wasn't sure it came from. No, I wasn't comics. sure because a lot of these things did come out of the uh, mm. the old uh, comics back in the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties era, and they, oh, that looks really good. Let's do it. You know, the Phantom and Superman, Batman, the Flash, all those guys came out of the old uh, DC and what's the other one? DC and Marvel comics, and I think it was another one. Mm. Yeah, and they had all these guys. They had the Superman, the Master Man, Hunters, the Flash, and the Green Arrow, and the Green Arch, and blah, 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 Green Lantern. All right, and the whole slew of them, yeah. All right, zip it, fella. Well, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, anyway. 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 Moving on. I'm not going to go for every actor in it, but the main actors are, obviously, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's Conan, no doubt. Conan the Barbarian. And actually, it's quite interesting. He, when he signed up for this... He had to sign a special contract mm. that he would not appear in any other similar type movies. Ah. No ah. sword and sandal sorcery type things because ah. they wanted him to be identified with Conan the Barbarian and no one, no other uh, acting role similar to it. He ah. could do other movies, but he couldn't do another sword. So, yeah. no... Um, he, so, couldn't, he couldn't do another sword and sorcery movie. I see. So that yeah, explain yeah. why he was never cast as a Hercules role, or if you wanted Possibly, to. Possibly, and I mean, and if if Lord of the Rings was done earlier on, mm. he probably couldn't get that either because that was that would be going into your fancy sword and sorcery type thing as well. Mm-hmm. Even though so I can't he, see he, many. He, roles so he had to go in all the action movies, like playing uh, playing a spy or uh, something else, or yeah, or or, 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 a, or a military guy or, or something. Or a policeman yeah. in. Um, 
um, kindergarten cop. Yeah, or what was the one is in a uh, was, was the one about the, the supernatural one? Um, um, the end of days. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he, uh, he was a de- I think he's a detective in that, wasn't he? Yes, I can't he remember. Was, so was... he played those roles, but he couldn't play a sword and sorcery role in. Uh, that was part of the deal. Yeah. Mm, Even though, when you think about this movie, um, it was, um, it was that really out of this world, and I don't, I haven't seen the yeah. new one, but I always think this one will top that one. Well, look, I don't know. No, you, 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 you can't say it top. It can top a movie you haven't seen. Mm. Um, you have to bear in mind that the new version, which we haven't seen, uh, would probably have different special effects. Mm. Bit of CGI thrown in, mm. different directors, mm. different interpretation. I don't know whether they're following the same story. Mm. I don't know. So, so, so we we might have a look at it one day. We might not necessarily do a review of it, but no. yeah. yeah. Anyway, whatever. moving on. Moving right along. Now, one of my favourite. I'll say not say not so much my one of my favourite actors. Mm-hmm. One of one of my most favourite voices. Mm. James Earl Jones. Jones. Now, for some of you guys who aren't really up to speed, the voice of, of Darth, Darth Vader, Vader was James Earl Jones put through, I think, a metalizer or something or other to make it a bit more mechanical. But that yeah. was James Earl and Jones. And he was in, his voice was also used in um, Lion King and a he number of other fossil, movies. Wasn't it? Something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he was in um, Field of Dreams. Mm-hmm. He, so he plays lots of good different roles, but it's just something about the guy's voice. Yeah. It's very... Mm. That's what I like about it. Anyway, moving right along. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, James plays a guy called Thulsa Doom. He's a nasty antagonist yeah. guy who's... Uh, He's a sorcerer, leader, uh, military leader, everything rolled into one. Yeah, interesting thing. Snake while, cult while too. James mm. L. Jones was te- coaching um, Arnold to sp- speak English, acting, <laughs> acting um, in return, Arnold sort of um, returned the favor by giving him a bit of, you know, giving him a bit of, you know, teaching him to be a bit stronger man. Oh, so he gave him some uh, bodybuilding and stuff and yeah. t- turning his body up. Okay. His body. Now, moving right along, um, a lady. Now, I think the right pronun- pronunciation of her name is Sandal Bergman. Mm. She played Valeria. She was another action type person uh, who was hanging around with Arnie, or Conan in this case. Uh, on their quest. Yeah, interesting thing is when they did the sex scene, neither one of them... Oh, well, you're going to say that for telling the story. Arnold or and her, they they both had never done it before, and so it felt that it kind of felt really awkward yeah, to them. that's okay. You could have saved that I for know, later. I know, I just thought I'd yeah, bring it okay. out there. That's okay. Now, here we go. Jerry Lopez. He was, I think he was a surfer. So he was a fit guy. And this is one of his first acting roles, I believe. Or for, uh, he plays Subutai. He's um, also part of Conan's team yeah. of intrepid thieves mm. uh, and whatever. Thieves, robbers, uh, whatever. Yeah, Action it's sh- guys. It's yeah. a shame that he never appeared in the sequel, sadly. No, well, you, 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 I think he was a, one, uh, a one-off. Oh, oh, yeah, one-off this movie. I don't, I don't know. I haven't checked his career. Mm. Now... I knew it near in the end of who I'm going to talk about. There's a guy, a little Chinese guy, mm-hmm. Chinese guy. He only goes by one name. He doesn't use his last name. His name is Macau. M A C O. I think it's the right pronunciation. His last name is Iwamatsu. So I think Macau's a really good way. Yeah. Yeah. He plays the Wizard of the Mounds and he actually joins the. Uh, mm-hmm our intrepid team and uh, he assists them using some of his magic and he's actually and the narrator imparts, in this movie he's also a narrator but he imparts wisdom to them as well because mm. uh, he's a wizard plus uh, oh, a smart guy mm. yeah, well, a wise guy now, uh, anyway um, but I'll only mention one more Max von Sydow plays a bit part in this he plays King Orsic Orsic and he sends them on a quest to get his daughter, who has been sucked up into this snake cult run by 
James Earl Jones. Yeah. Doctor Doom. Oh, not Do- Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. No, that was uh, <laughs> cra- that was coming back. He was Doctor Doom, wasn't he? Sorry, yeah. he's just, his name's just <laughs> Doom in this case. Sorry, guys. Don't yeah. know why I said Doctor. Don't yeah. know why. Mr. Don't ask me. Yeah, come back played Doctor Doom, I think. Okay. Anyway, anyway. And I won't mention other people. All right. Um, Do you want me to dive into the story now? Splash. Uh, but don't. It's a long story. Do not okay, make this okay. twice as long I'll, as a movie. I'll keep it short. <laughs> okay. The first part was Conan as a boy, say about nine or ten or twelve. Oh, what? Uh, Whatever, he's anyway, a child. And anyway, his parents get brutally murdered by Doom and his cohorts. Cohorts, very good name, yes. Cohorts. And his <laughs> and he and a bunch of other children have been placed into slavery, slavery at a mill, I think. Yeah, the the wheel of torture or something like they yeah. called it because they, they they had to push it around and crush yeah. wheat or something rather yeah, or whatever. For, yeah, and it's like they never given a day yeah. off oh, or here, anything like that. Here it that. is, the wheel of pain. Ah, yeah. what mm-hmm. a great name. Well, work is painful, isn't it? Yeah, mm. so the Conan works at it for days, years, and years. Rain, no sleep, no mm. snow. What yeah, happened? and soon enough, his body is all toned up and, and he's all he's big and massive. He's buff and yeah, muscly. Mm. Yeah, and soon enough, his time at the mill is over because, and a man decides to buy him. Yeah. I don't know if he buys him. I think he's one of the soldiers who actually run the place, and he's only. I think he's one of the only people left there run, uh, pushing the mill thingy around. He says, "I can make more money out of this guy," so they put him on the gladiator circuit. Yeah, he mm. did. And then when he was done with the gladiator, whatever, he is te- sent to um, sort of is going to um, special martial arts trainers yeah, yeah, to yeah, teach yeah. him the valuable art of fighting properly. Yeah, so we can make, make, make more money for his... Well, it's, I'll say he's owner-manager. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And eventually he joins the military and his superiors really like his um, style and all that stuff. And finally, 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 um, he's outlived his usefulness and his um, contract is terminated. Well, for some reason, we do not know 100% why, but his owner-manager decides to let him loose. Maybe because he's getting too strong and dangerous and independent. Yes. Well, well, if I don't let him go, he's probably going to kill me soon, so I'll do the right thing. Yes. Mm, maybe. Although he's very impressed with his prodigy. Oh, he is. And yeah, but he's impressed with him, but he's still a slave. Mm, true. Mm. Anyway, the yeah, so um, Conan goes on his own. And, Out in the wilderness. And eventually finds a tomb where it has an old sword, you know. He, he in, finds an old sword and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that belonged to some old warlords or something. Yeah, well, they were supposed to be uh, Atlantean colonists, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, ah. he then <laughs> takes the sword and along the way he meets a witch and she predicts his sort of future, I think. You're going to be a great man and you're going to have your own kingdom and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure if... Um, if even though we find out later it comes true, but I'm not sure if, if Conan believed it or not. But anyway, at this point in anyway, time... Anyway, at this point in time, he meets another thief named... What's his name again? Subutai, I think. Yeah, Subutai. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, what's his name? Subutai, yeah. And he believes in the three winds, while Conan believes... Four winds. In, four winds, sorry. Yes. And He missed one. And Conan <laughs> believes in the... Crumb. Crumb, the... Um, Earth God, I think. Well, it is. well, Earth God, yeah, or we, yeah. whatever. He, he's got the God of his people. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so they go on into the city, and he goes in search of people who may know of the guys who may have killed his family, and he goes around telling them about a sn- sort of a snake co- uh, yeah, cult, a snake sort of cult, thing. yes. Mm. And of course, one of them did mention something valuable, but of course, he's not talking very much because it's none of his business. And, lo- and loose guess, slips sink ships. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, so they sneak inside the palace and they meet another thief named da 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 Valeria. For the beautiful Valeria. She's a very attractive lady. I think for me she's a dancer and and different things, but she's very fit looking. Yeah. 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 So they head inside, and Conan was able to obtain a beautiful red ruby and an and the symbol the jade symbol of the snake cult that he that he yeah it's, it's two snakes in a circle with two heads looking at each other going 
Yeah. Yeah, over a sun of sorts. Black sun or black moon or whatever. Yeah, anyway. Mm, yeah. They then sneak off with the, their treasure and they head to a pub where dear old Conan and a Valeria... Tavern, not a pub. Okay, mm. tavern. And they and Conan <laughs> and Valeria, they make out. Did they what? And then <laughs> um, somehow the king gets wind of their exploits and he tells them... Um, that he's impressed and that he, that he wants to employ them. He needs him. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's always nice to be needed by somebody. Yeah, and he says that his daughter has been corrupted by the snake group and he wants her back. And he says to them, um, as he gives them some awesome rubies. Oh, oh rubies and as, emeralds. As and, yeah, a, a handful, handful of jewels. Yeah, and tells them that while gold may lose its, its shine and all that stuff, um, he, all he wants now he, is his, his, daughter his, his daughter is back. And he's an old man too, so the only thing he's really got that means anything to him, anything that means anything to him is his lovely young daughter. Yes. I've got two of those. Uh, yeah, anyway, Conan is, <laughs> wants to go on, but Valeria and, and Sub, Sumatai, Sumatai. Doesn't, they're not sure about this. They think yeah. it's it dangerous. Could be, it could be dangerous. Let's just take the money and run. Yeah. Mm. But Conan goes on his, on his merry way, and there he meets the little wizard guy I mentioned. Macau. Yeah, and he's a funny one. He lives in the wilderness. like He's sort of like Yoda in that way. Yeah, well, he lives near a graveyard. Yeah. And he's very funny and very silly when I think about this. Well, he's silly but wise and magical. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, Conan goes on his merry way and he tells him to... He leaves his sword and his horse behind and rides a camel and wears flowers. Don't ask me why. Well, actually, um, some of these cultists that follow Doom all carry around flowers and praise him, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Early day hippies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, he goes to them and he goes to disguise, but then the bad guys find out where who he is and they torture him and they leave him on a sort of a tree, nailed to a tree, to die, I think. If that's the word. What's he doing there? Just hanging around? Yeah, and he's about to die, and luckily enough, his two friends find him, and they take him to our wizard. And and they said, and he says he's be able to fix him, but it will cost a very big, heavy price. Yes, but he didn't say what the price was. And Vera says that she wants to pay, she'll pay it. It what, doesn't matter what it takes. Any, anyway, it's, so he draws all these symbols all over... Yeah. Conan's body. Uh, like, uh, yeah, and he some tells, sort of spells. Yeah, yeah, he says that some demons or spirits are going to come and try to take him away. And if he survives a night or something or other. Yeah. 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 Soon enough, the, the spirits come and Subutai and Va- they try to fight them off as much best they yeah, can. And they do. Actually, in just a lot, Magic did that. That was clever. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that reminds me of um, you know Temp- uh, what are Temple of Doom now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, no. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. Uh, yeah. At the end there, the island there, there's little ghosty things were going around. Yeah, same sort of idea. Hmm. Yeah, so soon enough, the next morning, I think, he's revived. The wounds on his hands and feet are, are gone and all that. Yeah, lovely. And now they set to work on their next plan of trying to get the princess and of course, Subatai reminds Conan that you sh- that this is just a rescue mission, not, not a revenge mission. Yeah, not yeah. That's not a revenge killing job. It's just in and out. Yes, mm-hmm. meaning um, Conan is not. Too and Conan says, "Not a nothing. lot." He just practically. <laughs> he just looks at him. Okay, okay, his actions whatever. speak louder than words. He's not pleased with the plan, but he's going to go along with it. Huh. Maybe. Shrug his shoulders. We, well, we don't really know. He just, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's enigmatic, isn't he? Yeah, soon enough they arrive in there and it's like a um, sex orgy inside. I don't know why sex They were or- having an orgy. Yeah. <laughs> That's and it's, what it was. And they're feeding cannibalistic type yeah. soup. <laughs> yeah, it had Yuck. bits and pieces of body parts thrown into a big container and they're going, oh, yummy, yummy. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know how Doom knew it, but he kind of started transforming to a snake and started sneaking away. I think he knows that Conan and his people were coming, I think, or maybe he's gone off to it, take it, a nap. Could be put a few, a few more plates set for them or something. Have uh, some, don't know. Uh, I guess so, he's coming to dinner. Yeah, yes, so soon enough, 
um, Conan and his group, they start making trouble and they grab the princess as quickly as they possibly can <laughs> and sneak <laughs> off into a, into a back entrance. And while this is happening, Doom prepares his bout of revenge by, by, by mm. using a little small snake and turning and shooting it in a bow and arrow. Oh yeah, style he, he, put, he gets a small snake about a meter long, or mm. and he he pulls it straight and goes straight like an arrow. Shaft. Yeah, and it shoots mm. right into various. So that's totally impossible now, don't you? I know it's impossible, but this is fantasy world, oh, guys. Okay, sorry. Folks. So he's supposed to have feathers on the back for the, for the flight and to fl- help it help it track, oh, and a bit of a heavier boy. head at the front. Oh, and stuff. Anyway, whatever. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Just so, saying. so, um, so Vera gets the worst of it. She got gets it the poisoned, and she dies from it, and re- and realizes that she paid. She a horrible paid the ultimate price, price for saving Conan. Ah. So she's cremated, and Conan replaces the ruby which he gave her to his as a. As oh, a as They're an engagement present. As a bit of a right memento, and, and decides to wear that as in honour of her. So you put, you know, hey, and if you get short of cash, yeah, you can cash it in it. No, sorry. Anyway, moving on. So, guys, um, Conan starts making plans of of defending his air, the um, with you know his area to and fighting off the bad guys. They start pl- placing sticks into the ground. They're fortifying the area. Yeah. Okay. And our wizard guy, he has a few um, soldiers' armor le- left he, he, aside. He, 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 he raided some tombs around the area and found some armor and some weapons and things. Well, they weren't using them anymore. They've been dead for hundreds or thousands of years or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. And before, he co- and the princess is nailed to a. I don't know what it is. No, not nailed. To, um, she's chained to an altar or things. To, oh, to a big, bit. oh, big rock or something. Oh, rock, whatever, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Rock altar. Rock altar. There yeah. you go. And rock of ages. So oh. as the um, enemy soldiers approach, Kram, um, Conan prays to Kram and tells him about ha- grant him revenge and if he's not listening, to hell with off. you. Yeah, mm-hmm. hell with you. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice way to address your God. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He, he only knows him of him by his dad and mom. Hey, cr- Crumb might be a bit crummy, you see, so yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. they do a good job, and and our little f- wizard friend did help a bit. He Oh, yeah, he, well, he's only a little guy, you know. It's, he's, he's, he's like a mascot almost, isn't he, when you think yeah. about it? Yeah, yeah eventually um, Conan gets, kills two, some of the men, and at one point while he's fighting um, off one of the other um, soldier guys, or Doom's a qu- k- k- oh. he, um Valeria steps in and saves him. Mm. You know, mm. And she looks, and as Conan looks at her, she's dressed in uh, like a yeah. god. It's been like Yoda came back and says, Use a force, Luke. Yeah, and she yeah. says, quotes, Do you want to live forever? Just quote, she says a couple of times throughout this movie. <laughs> well, I might live another 20 or 30 years. I don't, about, and don't know. She, of course, forever. she vanishes, yeah. and Conan was finally able to defeat his. That he dooms cavort, and eventually, and <laughs> you're in trouble. The word cavort, aren't you? Yes, and Doom <laughs> flees like the um pro- very little loser, and with a dog bet- with his little tail between and his legs. And he was about so. to shoot another poison arrow into the princess, but luckily enough, um, super high uses his shield to deflect it. What yeah. a good little thief archer thing, whatever he is. Yeah, and. Mm. So Conan prepares his final stand, if you can call it, later the next evening. He he and the princess head inside the um, inside the snake cult's um, palace or whatever, and it he's addressing his followers and the doom his followers, and. He then sees Conan approaching, and he tells him, "No thanks to him that he Conan survived and be able to live and stuff like that." Yeah, because he killed his parents. Yeah. He made Conan stronger, and he survived. Mm. So he said, "Yeah, you owe me something to a certain degree. I made you. I protected you in yeah, some ways by Conan actually not killing of, you." Yeah, Conan thinks about this, but then he does. He but still lets. Conan's um, not stupid. But Conan just yeah. swipes 
an, um, an axe into um, Doom's head and drops off his head. Well, he, he took he, he took a couple swings at it. Yeah, he, he, and he drew blood. He drew first blood. Hey, that's a good. Uh, sorry, Rambo would have been proud. No. And uh, he, yeah. and just like um, one of the Gorgons, he throws down the um, Doom's head onto the ground. And it rolls Cap. down the stairs and stuff. And on all these falls, go. Oh. <laughs> and they said, okay, party's over, and they all went home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Conan just sits there, probably thinking about what just happened and and Doom's final words to him, and probably a lot of other things, I'm not sure. And then he, he decides to burn the whole t- temple down. The temple, yeah. And takes the princess back hey, to where she the blocks. Temple of Doom? I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, what's Doom's temple? It's Temple of... No. Okay, sorry. Don't go there. Oh, okay. Right. And so he takes the princess back to her home and and we hear a narrating from the wise Macau. priest. Macau. Macau. He Whatever. goes on to say that Conan goes on to having great adventures in the West and years and years later he becomes a king by his own hands just as um, the witch predicted. The yeah, end. The, yeah, you're right. No. Uh, <laughs> so that's the movie, and I always think this one is one of his best when I think about it. Well, I don't know one of his best, but so I like action hero type guys, and I like sword and sandals. So when they actually come together nicely, mm. uh, yeah, oh, look, you think about it. Okay. No, you, get, no, you go back to those big epics they did years ago, mm. like your... Your Ben Hur's, your Spartacus, your Barabbas, those mm. big movies I made. Well, they had good storyline, mm. good actors, mm. believable, uh, what do you call it, plot. Mm. Um, everything came together and the, the good sets, good direction, yada, yada, yada. And the same thing comes into the modern uh, epics, so like, you know, like Conan. Conan was not a blockbuster. It didn't make as much money at the theatre. That's a shame. Uh, uh, but no, but since the theatre, it's made a lot more money mm. because people say, hey, this isn't a bad movie, save the home media side of it. They made a lot more money than they, did any, they could ever make at the theatre. True. I think it made about $300 million at home, all up now, uh, as of about 2007. Mm. But at the box office, they spent about... Twenty mil on budget, and they made about sixty to seventy, or mm. bit all around it, maybe seventy to yeah. eighty. That reminds uh, me, um, takings worldwide. Way to the opening mm. of the movie, it said there was a narration. There was a, a bit of a quote there that says, "That that will make us st- um, kill us will make us stronger." I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what a good line. Yeah. Where did that come from? I don't know. Didn't you say it came from a, f- a famous um, philosopher or something? Yeah, I, I think you know, one of those uh, ancient philosophers, well, well, not ancient, but not a philosopher from way back when says something uh, like they were, well, wasn't, doesn't, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, it could be one of the modern day, like in the past hundred years or so, or it could go back mm. to ancient Greece for all I know, one of the wise admit, guys back then. Compared mm. to this movie, um, I'm not going to be nasty or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I've yeah. watched um, Scorpion King, but I often still like... Oh, I like Cone... Dwayne. I do. I still prefer Cone the Barbarian's movie well, to well, that. I think he started it. Hmm. Maybe one of the early modern type sword and sandal movies. So yeah, other people probably would have copied what he did to a certain degree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I think even the... I don't know. I think there were a few movies out there that deal with... Um, sword and sandal yeah, type yeah. movies. See, another point too, when it came to this movie, when they were casting, they thought they saw Arnold Schwarzenegger and he looked, I believe, I've been told, you know, in these notes here, that he looked very similar mm. to the image in the cartoon, or the comic book. Yeah, I've noticed that. He had the same sort of shape, build, that sort of thing. When you put the clothes on him, you might well say it was yeah. straight out of the comic book. I did read yeah, something. So he made, and being Scandinavian, mm. or Austrian, whatever he is, um, mm-hmm. Austrian, I think. Um, uh, he had that European touch about him, mm. uh, and yeah, it just it just worked. And the accent didn't actually go against you in the movie because you're going to a faraway f- place, which is probably in the Middle East or Asia or Europe mm. in the olden days. You don't know exactly where it is because it's all fictional. So yeah, I mean that's what's yeah. interesting mm. in this movie. Mm. It has a mixture of cults, cults, cults like yeah. one of them. I can think. I think on the top of my head is 
Um, uh, let me see. Um, sort of the um, G- Genghis Khan. Yeah, stuff that's all. Yeah, the, the uh, up, up, up there. Um, oh, I don't know how the, far back Genghis Tibet, Khan goes. Tibet? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Genghis Khan. He, 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 well, that's uh, the Mongols and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's sort of that's sort of same sort of feeling for this movie. Yeah, yeah. Another thing hmm. I should mention that Arnold mo- modeled his performance as Conan after Steve Reeves. Steve and Reeves. his performance in, in the, Hercule. In the old Sword and Sandler movies. Yeah, mm. so that's where he got it from. So, yeah, because it's, it's, everyone gets something from somewhere. Mm. And then they put their own bent on it. Mm. Yeah, so that's a good thing uh, that he got inspired for this sort of thing. We've got to get inspiration from somewhere. I mean, it's sort of like when... Remember, did we, did we review... Uh, what's that Egyptian one? Um... Oh, crikey, where they uh, made a pyramid and stuff. Um, uh, you mean the Land of Pharaohs. Did we do that one? Yeah, we did. Well, Land of the Pharaohs, we did some time back last year, uh, I think. And um, this year. the guy who did the role of the pharaoh actually asked the director, how do I play a pharaoh? There's no reference point. He says, just make, yeah, you're yeah, going to act it like a rich megalomaniac sort of guy in the current day and just transport that into the movie and you'll be pretty close to it. And that's what he did. Hmm. So, yeah, um, people don't change. Times might, but people don't. Yeah, wealthy people, I mean, um, if you look at any wealthy people in the past or at least reference points here and there, you'll find that a lot of um, wealthy people, some wealthy people may turn out to have been total... Um, wealthy freaks. Well, yeah, money, 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 money. Well, you see, back in those days too, the more wealthy the pharaoh was or the country leader, mm. the stronger the nation was. Yeah. So it, you got you got that aspect. So you go there and you wage war in another country mm. and you bring home all their treasures. You've got gold, silver, gemstones, whatever, mm. and you put them in your reserve. So you, have to, you, you can pay your army. Yeah. You can get food for your people. Yeah. You can mm. pay other guys to come so, on board if you need them. Moving on, guys. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. You might as well money. So, yeah. thanks to a lot of the old sandal and sword movies, the ones like... Why um, do you always say it backwards? It's sword and sandal. Okay, sword and sandal <laughs> movies. Um, they kind of inspired the, this movie a lot when you think about it. Well, that's really got the old concepts from probably... That's probably, if you look at it, the, that was done and then the comic books were done... Mm. And the guy who looked at the comic books back in the uh, 70s said, I wouldn't mind making that movie mm. because he would have been still watching Steve Reeves' yeah. movies I and everything else. So, I yeah. could definitely mm. see the comic book. I mean, I, I think I do recall seeing Conan the Barbarian's comics and they usually were very revealing. And I imagine some of you guys out there have re- re- actually read the comic and looked I, at the images and probably I think... I personally Whoa. haven't seen them. Hmm. However, when you look at something like that... Hmm. And look at Thor in the old cartoon books. There would have been something very similar because he was a Norse god going back that old period. So he would have been similar to Thor. I've seen, yeah. I've seen Thor pictures, yeah, mm. in the old cartoons, comic books. Yeah. I just mean mm. that mm. it must be some of the comics strips that must be very revealing stuff, considering oh, that yeah. oh, oh, yeah, was... the way Conan and um, the characters dressed. Well, they didn't have restrict. These heroes didn't have restrictive clothing on, so they could move better, better in fighting. But I've always noticed something in these old movies mm-hmm. and in the old comic strips and whatever that the female warriors wore a lot less clothes than the men did. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, and it's funny, <laughs> funny that this, that sort of thing it continues to be today. Yeah, I've, that. I've, I've even know. seen Just it. In, can't figure it. I've even seen it in the video games. Ugh. Yeah, all you always see is skin and a little piece of material wrapped around it here and there. I don't you know, even know how they. I get. keep wondering how they <laughs> able to kick someone in the face without giving them a show. Well, they've got undies on, okay. How do you know? Well, that's a lot, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> What's the Scotsman wear under his kilt? I don't okay. want to find out. No. Uh, anyway, going through a couple of facts and figures here. This movie was made for about twenty million, but the initial projection for the budget was forty million. Hmm. And I thought, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, they had to trim it down a tad. Um, Luckily, they got away with graphics here and there. They didn't do as much graphics. Didn't do much graphics back then. They did some graphics. They did mechanical stuff. That that 
that snake they use, that was actually a mechanical snake with rubber and stuff, like vulcanized rubber and stuff over it and different things, and they did make a lot of sets up. They did do some miniature sort of stuff mm. and use that models, and they did other things uh, yeah. using smaller sets, but yeah. you know, use those in a big way. Yeah, and, I read yeah, somewhere yeah. that some mm. of the girls mm. that were working on the set, that they were experienced women who knew about how to deal with snakes, meaning they kind of employed the right people for this movie. Well, there you go. it does help. Well, it does help that you you know you get the right people to take part in this film, and make sure that no one gets bitten or hurt well, or that, cause any well, harm to. The I don't think reptiles. anyone got bitten by any snakes or anything like that. But for the sword play, even with the fake swords, the aluminium ones which were blunt and different things, and uh, and fire glass ones, whatever they used, they still got hurt. Hmm. Some of them did. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. It is dangerous, even when you're pretending. So, yeah, you've got to be very careful. Mm. I can admit, though, I, I do like this movie, and I like the music they used for it. Mm. Uh, John Williams will, must be very proud of the um, composer for this yeah. one. Yeah. Actually, just moving along a little, because we've got a few things to talk about here. Um, Schwarzenegger was paid $250,000 back in those days. Yeah, that's another thing. And, he got 50% and, of no, the no, cut no, from no, this no, movie. No, and placed on a retainer, hmm. like a wage, yeah, hmm. as well. Uh, and he was restricted from starring in any other sword and sorcery film. I think you mentioned that. Yeah, right? I did. But yeah, that, that was part of his yeah, contract. Actually, yeah, actually, yeah. I found mm. out that he got 50% of the take in the... For the movie. Well, I don't know we did that. Do you say that? I, I shouldn't think so. I mean, 5%, actor. sorry. If, well, not... that could have been his retainer. Hmm. I don't know. But he got the 250 straight up to sign a contract. Hmm. That's not too bad. Uh, now, um, Schwarzenegger, he wanted a more athletic look than he had. Hmm. He was he was too much... He had a lot of muscle, but the wrong shape. Yeah. So he undertook an 80-month training regime before shooting the film. Hmm. Uh, so he had to lose... He went from, I think... He was some down from 240 pounds to 210 yeah. pounds mm. to get down his weight so he could be fit but slender where yeah, it's supposed to be. I've actually yeah, seen yeah, a picture yeah, yeah, yeah. of him before mm. he started his film career. Um, his muscles were rather on the very roundish size, yeah. like very yeah. big, like bigger than um, basketballs. Yeah. yeah, but he was bulky, but when it came down to his waist, so he didn't want a big fat area yeah. down there you want to trim taut and terrific but he, he went for uh, athletics he went running he uh, uh, he did a lot of different um yeah yeah oh, I mean, rope climbing horseback riding swimming and and running do to tone his body up and that's well, how good he looked after all that work well and he, and he no and he looked good in the role when, yeah. he, when he stood there semi-naked or something wrapped around his guts there he's got a sword in his hand he looked like a oh, crappy. He looks like a real warrior. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Anyway, they mm. made a sequel yeah. after this. So I want to tell you when. Uh, well, a couple of years later, yeah. Conan the Destroyer. We won't yeah. do that one at the moment. We might do later on. Yeah, and sub. To, what's his name again? Who? The actor who plays um, um, sub. Super high. Uh, yeah, he doesn't make it. The actor for that no, one didn't appear. Right, in no, it. Conan Jay one, and Macau. Yeah. Yeah, they two. They were in. They were in the sequel, but yeah. everybody else knew. Yeah. But well, I killed everybody yourself. Well, not everybody. <laughs> so, oh. I still stuck around. He was well, the only... Well, he went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And, and James Earl Jones' role, he was killed. He, he lost his head. <laughs> Vera um, made a disappearance. And uh, Valeria was dead. Uh, yeah. And he'd already done the quest for Kim or, uh, King Orsic and his daughter, so they would need to be come back into it. And, yeah. Uh, I do... Uh, uh, Mike and I were talking a while back. I'm not, I don't. This, I know this. I'm not going to talk about religion or anything. But Mike and I were making a, an interesting discussion about their beliefs, the people back then, and we were wondering if people who um, who were good people and were believing in these religions and followed the, the, the and followed them faithfully followed the religions of their tribe or race of people. Yeah. Whether or not that they would still be accepted to. Um, into paradise heaven, or, Valhalla, or heaven, wherever. Or yeah. heaven or yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, whatever. And you, you, you sit back and wonder because they, they, they don't know what we know today yeah, and that's all, it was all localised. Yeah, because... Interesting. Yeah, because um, we, we all... To, 
the president. We've um we have our new sets of we have our own sets of yeah, beliefs. Yeah, and, and they and would have had their beliefs. Yeah. So, yeah. And how yeah. did they know whether or not that they would, you know, I mean, be obviously, accepted by God? If they had a good no, if, you know, if, 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 this the leave alone a little bit, but it's, it's just basically like if they had a good culture and it was morally sound and they had moral laws, uh, would they be penalised? Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, moving along. This is not a theological I know, discussion. I know, okay. but it has left me wondering because... We talk about things because, behind, behind so closed doors. Because, mm-hmm. because um, would God be able to accept someone who didn't know the truth about God? Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, moving right along. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, guys, if I'm making this a more about we, religion. Well, we could do a podcast on theology, if you like. And, I know, like, but yeah. this was an interesting question because... No. If you're a good person and yeah. you believed in a and different set of religions, but at the same time you're still a good, good person, still good. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you still be accepted by God and not penalised for a different set of beliefs? Okay, moving right along. Anyway, moving right along. Sorry, guys. <laughs> all right. Okay, right, 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 right. Okay, Charles Bronson and Sylvester Stallone and a comedian, ex-rugby player called Jethro, something or other, and a William Smith, not Will Smith, uh, uh, all pl- who, who have all played tough figures. Uh, Let me guess, they were going to be ordinary. No, they were, um, uh, they were considered, I think, for the roles. Mm, okay. But they all considered Arnie was more suited for, even, I think they even, everyone saw him bodybuilding and his body and his attitude. He's, they were look, they're looking for a mindful person, not just an action hero, yeah, I, a quiet guy who was, Tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, just now, I just closed my eyes, just thinking about Sylvester Sloan, and I just don't think of him kind of barbarian material. Yeah, but the point is, they they were the quite brooding type person, mm. and I think Arnold had that personality. That's why I was thinking. And I think thinking. that's what inspired these guys to take him on. Yeah, mm. that's one of the reasons why I like about um, those filmmakers back then, they just pick someone who whom they never consider and just cast and think he's the right suit take on the yeah. role. Well, some people actually write a script with somebody in mind. Mm. Say, hey, you're great, I've got the script. And, yeah, and and if I make it really, really good, I might be able to talk to them, they might take the role on. So, yeah. Um, but actually, moving, on, moving along a bit further, we have, before the production started, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the guy... Uh, Jerry Lopez, they moved in together for a month or so before the filming started mm. so they can practice the lines together and build a rapport so, a rapport so they felt better acting uh, on set because they will, they didn't know each other and they were new actors. Mm. So, yeah, interesting. Mm. Yeah, I read somewhere that Arnold got along with um, James L. Jones. They've become good friends after I, I, this Well, production. you said before that James L. Jones gave his acting tips for doing how to deliver different scenes. And Arnold's given him tips on how to be a bit fitter. Get, get fitter, yeah, to yeah. To make sure he fits into this role. Yeah. Um, actually, they, they chose these actors, uh, Arnold, Jerry, and um, Sandal, mm-hmm. uh, because they wanted people who looked the, ro- look the roles. See? Good. So they got so picked three people in their mind's eye saying, yeah, he's Conan. Now, look, we want a, a girl who looks like an Amazon a bit. Mm. And this girl, she's not fat, she's not skinny, she's yeah. athletic. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Mm, I mean, yeah. Even nowadays, mm. I, I've seen the actresses they cast and sometimes they don't really, they don't look at the right type of actress when I think about well, it. Well, sometimes they're not. I think it's because you know them so well in movies, yeah. other movies, but... Then you see him in a, this well, car, yeah. a movie that, like, when me and Mike were watching um, the Disney version of Aladdin, you know, not the 19, 2009 I met, we, where we reviewed just a while back, but um, we watched it and I thought, um, I just didn't like the fact that the Jasmine in that one was so... Petite. Petite yeah. and, and such a... Well, I just miss the I miss the cartoon version of her character where she's she's outgoing and she and she knows how to jump from rooftop to rooftop without having to feel like she's a Whatever. scary cat. Mm. I just feel like somehow the the filmmakers got missed that role, missed it for a mile when in that role when I in that movie so yeah. much. Yeah, no, okay. But anyway, like, like there's a, yeah, when when they write a script, sometimes they get ideas and what they want. 
And so, so it's like Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. When they're casting the first movie, mm. they had everyone lined up. They didn't have the role for Harry Potter. They were looking for an individual. And they saw Daniel Radcliffe at the theatre of his parents and the uh, producers saw him in there in the audience series. That's Harry Potter. And they, had, they went and asked his parents. They said, well, ask... Ask our son; he'll be do, he'll be doing the acting, mm. and he agreed to uh, sign up to do the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, you get a, in your mind's you got an idea mm. as how someone's going to look. Anyway, moving further along, I do think that it is. <laughs> oh, no. I just don't like it when actors just get they just they don't look the right part. Sometimes they can be get beefed up, you know, and make them look stronger well, they and, and good looking. But I I just miss. I just miss the fact that they just pick people, you know, they don't, they just pick them out of, from anywhere well, out there, not just um, out of an, in a, because they're, they've got a popular face or popular well, profile. That, that, it does help. It sells movies. I know, but it's always great when it's you It's about the bank balance sometimes. I know, but it's always great <laughs> when they cast a, a person that, that's not part of the, um, the sort of the, sort of part of the um, film, you know, f- film industry. It's always great. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, look, we'll take it this way. I'm not quite sure of the years on this, but... Uh, but um, mm-hmm. Okay, Mila Jovovich, mm-hmm. Resident Evil, yeah? Yes. She was in all those movies, right? Mm-hmm. All of them, I think? Oh, I think it's all of them. All of them. Yeah. Uh, now, she was also in, I think, the, with The Fifth Element with Bruce Willis. Yes. I think that might have been before, I can't remember. I uh, think it was. Right. So the point is... She established herself as an action hero type person and she was interesting and athletic enough to do the job for that. So uh, taking her from there and putting her into Resident Evil was an easy yes, an easy move. Uh, and But yeah, if they look too skinny and delicate, you look at that, what's that like, Electra movie? Uh, I can't remember, the, something uh, Ghana? Is it something? What? Last name, I think it's something in Ghana. I think last. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know. I never watched Electra. Oh, well, Electra, she's another sort of action hero type person, mm-hmm. and, and she's, she's fit and solid, not fat, but athletic. Look, yeah, and that you need someone who's got, who looks like you've got stamina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just mm. can't stand it when they mm. don't do that right. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Go. More Go. information. Mm-hmm. Sean Connery and John oh, Huston gosh, no. were considered for the other roles, mm. but James Earl Jones and Max von Sydow got them. Interesting, isn't it? I can see John Huston playing the the king. Not sure about Sean Connery playing the. Nah, uh, he's too clean cut. He, he, yeah, he just uh, no, James Earl no, Jones. No, 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 no I like no, him better. No, 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 anyway, no. I just think he's too clean cut for that role. I know a clean cut. He can be nasty, but the point is that, uh, yeah, I uh, when you look at something like an evil guy, and then you look at someone like. Sean Connery, who's been a good guy in all his other movies, mm. you're going to say, well, that's James Bond doing an evil guy or yeah. something. Yeah, so it's not going to work. I think I've seen him yeah, in, yeah. Hi- in Highlander, but other than that... Yeah, but he was the bad guy. Yeah, I know that, but I just don't think yeah. he would be able to pull off pl- playing a, um, a barbarian type yeah, character. Yeah, but, but James or Jones done different roles. He's not as high profile mm. as, say, Sean Connery is. And he's got... I mean, he's got James... Bond written all over him and that sort of personality. Mm. You see, you know, I mean, mm. anyway. I know he also played Robert Hood in um, another movie with another actress. Yeah, um, with, first, um, night, Hepburn. First, first Night, was it? No, that was a different one. That was King Arthur. I'm talking about Robert Hood. Yeah. Yeah, Sean Connery was in Robert Hood. I think it was. I thought. I think the movie. Oh, I think not the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Robert Hood. Yeah, yeah, the other. Yeah, but I think at first. Yeah. Like, that's the other movie. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I've yeah. got too many movies in my head. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've known more movies than you. No, know. I got. I, I've got over six thousand in my collection. How many you got? Plenty. No, you not. Yeah, half anyway, of mine. Anyway, yeah. I know <laughs> the fact he was in a Robert Hood role, and he, he was, was with yeah, Audrey yeah. Hepburn, who yeah. played Maid Marian. Yes, yeah, and she and she looks so lovely. I always like Audrey. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I I just can't see him playing a barbarian type role besides Arnold Schwarzenegger. Don't see it. Can't no, see it. Anyway, won't just see getting it. back onto James or James and Go Max, on. they hired them partly to give confidence to the other minor actors. Oh, this is a serious movie. This we have to try to bring up ourselves up to their level, and maybe the energy that they've got might rub off on them a little bit. Mm. 
Mm. No, that, that was the idea of it. So he wanted some big name actors in it to go with the other people who were less known. Mm. Luckily, James L. Jones was well known. <laughs> yes, I know. It's just sad. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Mm. I won't go about the script writing. There's a bit of arming, arming, and toing, yeah. throwing, and everything yeah. else. Um, and they did. A, I'm not going to go through the location shoots because they did them all over the place. Yeah, um, I got to admit that that all the locations in this movie are all over the place. This is why I have a hard time trying to figure out where is it sh- sit shot. You know, where is this? Um, where is Conan the Barbarian lo- location at? I mean, what do, does he live in? Does he live in the Middle East or is he in um, somewhere in Europe? I don't know because most of the places have hills and green um, grass. And there was even one scene where they, he's traveling through snow, which could be almost anywhere. Well, not really almost anywhere. It could be even from Netherlands. They, they did, look, no, forget that. I mean, But some of the stuff was done in Yugoslavia in the beginning. Then they're doing some in Spain. and It was just all, all over the shop. Mm, yeah, and exactly. If the area looked good, they'd use it. Um, yeah. So there's not Although much, I yeah, often yeah. think that before um, earthquakes and stuff, I always think years ago bef- in that that maybe the whole world's uh, you know lands were all connected to one another, meaning well, all our our hillsides and grass and greenery may have been all in one you know spot in in. And were all our islands and all the um, places that are, that are all over the place have been once emerged together, but somehow over the years have separated. <laughs> we I'm, could talk about the continental drift in another podcast. But but again, <laughs> that, that's just um, no. That's there's a thing called the continental drift, yeah. and there's some theories about the the, the we were joined either uh, by land bridges and different yeah. things, and the and the uh, con- the continents and the island stuff are gradually moving, but yeah. uh, we won't get to that. Sorry, guys. I mean, I mean, I don't know how much truth. I don't it. know how much truth is it, and how much that might be true. And anyway, moving back along. Anyway, the the swords they made up for this some some were made personally. They were pretty cool. Yeah, uh, to suit Conan, because they they needed they needed one to suit him and the comic strip. Yeah, actually, there was an interesting quote yeah, yeah. on the yeah, um, yeah. sword. There was some interesting yeah, wording yeah. Um, mm. in some a language. I'm not sure what language, obviously. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think it. There was um, an interesting quote on um, Conan's sword. I can't remember what. The Made quote. in Japan. No, no. no. It just said something. Um, Sheffield Steel. No. no. Something. It was just I can't remember the quote, but it sounded very significant for the story. Anyway, moving on right along. Be careful, sharp edges. Shut up. Right. <laughs> what? Anyway, um, should we um, rate this movie before you start oh, making I, another joke? No, no, I just, you know, there's just, just so much. I can't talk about everything. It just, just goes on and on and on. Um, but no, the, um, the four main swords they used, the metal ones, the real ones, the big cast, cost $10,000 each to make. <laughs> then they made replicas using aluminium and... Um, Fiberglass or whatever for the battle scenes or whatever, yeah. But and then uh, so yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Mm. When you think about it, and they actually made copies of swords up to hand out to all the cast and crew as a, as a gift. That's nice. I yeah, think I lovely. read somewhere yeah. that mm. that Arnold kept the snake dagger. There was a da- there was a snake dagger, yeah. and he kept it as a memento of the um for being on the film set. Yeah, there was yeah. A, it was um given to the king as that his daughter was going to stab him yeah. and luckily enough um, he's who knows how he got got you yeah. know was able to but survive that talking about stabbing I'm going to I'm going to gross everybody out now <laughs> I mean I always believe that when they made up the blood bags that they put underneath people's clothing uh-huh. had something like glycerin and colouring and different things or whatever they're going to use they use real animal blood in oh, these bags gross. <laughs> don't gross the audience they're going to get sick now no they, they, um, they came a fake um, the copious amounts of blood spilled in the fight scenes came from bags of fake blood strapped to the performer's body bodies 
animal blood gathered from slaughterhouses was poured oh, onto great. the floor to simulate puddles of there human blood. There goes my blood. lunch, guys. No, so he's... There goes my dinner. I think I'm going to hurl now. <laughs> I'm now I'm rolling, my eyes are rolling back in my head. Uh, yeah, so uh, you start wondering how much of the fake blood was actually fake and how much of it was real animal blood blood in the place. But they're running around in animal blood, so you're wondering what's in the plastic bags and yeah. the, only the clothes as well. Yeah, so. I just heard it on the floor. Uh, yeah. All right. I, I, I won't go on the mechanical fix for the snake and everything. Yeah, uh, I think you. D- a, a I just a lost snake. my lunch and my dinner thanks <laughs> to you, Mike. She's blowing chunks, guys. Yeah, it's now on the floor <laughs> next to me. It's neat. Clean up on aisle five. Now, people. <laughs> now, um, before I go, it is available on eBay mm-hmm. to buy. Plenty of them there. But this one and the other one, Conan the Destroyer. Amazon, plenty to rent or buy there as well. But be careful, the uh, remake, the reboot 2011, uh-huh. don't get the wrong one. I haven't seen it, I don't know if it's good or bad, but if you're going to get the Arnie Schwarzenegger one, it ain't the 2011 one. Just be careful. Yeah. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna give this a 10. I'm going Because I like action movies and Sword and Sandal, and in the one package, it's really good. Well, I'm going to rate it for other reasons. Like, I like the costuming, the music... And the feeling of to this movie, and the weaponry, obviously, and oh, yeah. the narration from um, our wizard guy. <laughs> What's his name again? Macca. Macca. So I'm gonna. Just give, going Macca. So I'm no, gonna call, no, 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 um, no, no. give it ten out. Woo. Ten out of. Uh, ten and a half out of. Yeah, you're 10. not gonna go ten and a half out of. It. <laughs> ten out of ten and ten out of ten. There. I don't often give a ten out of ten, but. Yeah, it's, well, it's a it's a, it's a tri- it's a, it's it's in a tribute to the producer director. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, well, not the producer so much, but John mm-hmm. uh, Milius, who directed and wrote it. Um, mm-hmm. You got to say this guy worked hard mm-hmm. to deliver a really good product. Yeah, and the, for those people who mm-hmm. were at the comics and think, oh, this movie is nothing like the comic, yada yada yada, I would say to help you. Yeah. I don't like fans who just think, oh, too much of the but, comics but or fan- too Yeah, but fantasy's fantasy. I mean, fantasy is just another word for fiction, but taking the fiction into a different locality away from the norm. <laughs> so you could say just about every science fiction movie, every futuristic science fiction movie, is has technically got fantasy undertones in it because they're making it up as they go along. We ha- we don't live in that world. We don't live there. Mm. Uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, I mean, that's fantasy to me. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Good point. Aha. Uh-huh. So, guys, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. No, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and I do hope that you may check out this movie and feel free to check out the sequel called Conan the Destroyer. We'll be sure to review it. Well, yeah, we might review it next week, week after, or some, sometime in the near future. We'll have a go I'm at it. I'm hoping to do it next um, in our next podcast. I don't Ooh, to keep yeah. it all together. Oh, okay. The next podcast will be Conehead. I mean, Conan the Destroyer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and actually, that one's good because Grace Jones is in it, and I like Grace. Yeah, she's an awesome um, woman, and she looks very bright and fit. For now, this when you talk about Amazons and Zulus and all the other good groovy things, not she, being disrespectful. No, or I'm not because I mean, she's a warrior. Mm-hmm. That she looks like a warrior in this movie, and she acts like a warrior. She looks the part. Yeah, and she's a good um, representation for women of woman's lib. Yeah, hey. powerful women in this yeah. generation. And she gets a good job then too. Even though, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> Even though so many movies these days, they keep trying to enforce women's lib, you're not realising you're enforcing it. Why don't you put a, have a little fun with the story a little yeah. bit more? Yeah. I mean, I think that's what... You don't want a girly girly. You want, you want someone that can hold her own and fight next to the guy, yeah. not be protected by the guy. I just mean that a lot, that, of the, no. a lot of... Movies today, they try to enforce feminism instead of oh, trying force feminism. Instead yeah, yeah, of yeah. Make a it's gonna be natural and make it flow yeah. naturally. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. instead of exactly right, um, having a bit of a mixture of both men and women fighting alongside each other, you're fighting against that by making the women more powerful than the men. Mm. I don't. I think that's reverse sex sex discrimination when uh, I think about that. It's movie. called reverse bias, I think. I think they make the the females more manly than the man, and they go, "Well, hmm. they're supposed to be working side by side to battle a common enemy, 
not I'm better than you. you yeah, know. this so, is there's something off script writing and yeah, just, or story writing. Yeah, I just yeah. think it's just plain old rude, and I hate it. I, yes. I mean, I well, you look, you look at Star Wars. Yeah. Okay, Princess Leia. Right, mm-hmm. she was in charge of the Rebel Alliance. Mm-hmm. Some of the head people working with her were females. True. Some of the other ones were males. Males, and the other ones are aliens of indiscriminate sex. Uh, I do not know, but everyone was working there together. Not, and, and they weren't class conscious totally. Yes, you had a couple of leaders. Mm-hmm. The rest of them were working together. They weren't saying, "Oh, I'm better than you." No, no. They, yeah, so yeah, yeah it's, mm-hmm. they got to work together. Yes. And yeah, some movies, some stories. They have it's too it's too much social differences in there. It's just, oh, I'm yeah. better than you. Get away. I'm a little girly. You're yeah. not. No. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. If nah. I'm I'm, work, I'm trying to work on my own script at the moment, and I want to incl- include both um, men and women working together, not against one another. Exactly. Film female filmmakers out there, they keep on trying to strangle the film industry by their horrible way of filmmaking a lot. Some do. Anyway, irrespective. Irrespective. Oh, I, I mean, said they get stuck back in. Sorry. It's, a, it's just that I just get annoyed with these women out there. They just don't know how to create a story without even incorporating a male side to the story. I know. But they'll turn around and say, well, all the other movies have been male-dominated. Sorry, guys. But, but it's if you're going to be a filmmaker in this industry, guys... You get the you, balance. You get the balance mm. correct. I mean, I think that a lot of her... I love, I've been reading a lot of script books and and movie um, biographies and they keep saying create the balance exactly that's what create the they... balance make it real mm-hmm. not too fanciful then no one's going to like it ha ha ah. anyway do you want to wrap it now yes I might as well before I get into an, um, annoying arguments yeah, we'll so, do it again yeah. so this I hope you guys enjoy this podcast and I hope you guys join us for the next one this is Sarah Stevenson and Michael saying see you guys for the next one thanks for coming bye bye